We are going to solve a particular nonlinear equation. The equation looks very strange. Uh, the equation is z plus v cosecant v e to the minus v cotangent v. And we want to solve this thing equals zero, not for z, which would be easy, but instead for v. Uh, the main reason that this equation is interesting is that it occurs in the denominator of a particular integral for the Lambert W function. Uh, that can be seen at uh, the website www.orcca.on.ca slash capital L Lambert capital W. So orca.on.ca slash Lambert W. And you can get a copy of the poster, which has the integral on that. So we're interested in when this thing is zero, and for which values of v uh, the equation is satisfied. In order to solve it, we're going to have to do some work. This is a very strange, very highly nonlinear equation. And the fact that it can be solved analytically is a bit surprising. So we first use the complex uh, equation, the complex definition of the trigonometric functions. So cosecant v is 1 over sine v, and sine v is e to the iv minus e to the minus iv divided by 2i. So this is an expression for v cosecant v in terms of uh, complex exponentials. We rearrange that by multiplying top and bottom by e to the iv, and we get e to the iv over e to the 2iv minus 1. And then we say we don't really want to look at these i's anymore, so we put u equal to 2iv, and we get u times e to the u over 2 divided by e to the u minus 1 is v cosecant v. Similarly, uh, v cot cotangent v can be expressed using cosine v over sine v, and cosine v is e to the iv plus e to the minus iv divided by 2, and sine v is e to the iv minus e to the minus iv over 2i, so the 2's cancel, and the 1 over i pops up there, and so we wind up with e to the iv times e to the 2iv plus 1 over e to the 2iv minus 1, when we multiply top and bottom by e to the iv. Using the same change of variable is over here. This gives us u over 2, e to the u plus 1 over e to the u minus 1. So our equation then becomes z plus v cosecant v e to the minus v cotangent v is z plus u e to the u over 2 over e to the u minus 1 times e to the minus u over 2 times this thing. What we're going to do is pull the u over 2 into the uh, this e to the u over 2 times e to the minus u over 2, we're going to put those together. And so we get u over 2 times 1 minus e to the u plus 1 over e to the u minus 1. And we simplify this. That becomes e to the u minus 1 minus e to the u minus 1 divided by e to the u minus 1. And simplifying that, we're left with a minus sign and the 2's cancel. And we have u over e to the u minus 1. And that apart from sine, is the same as what's here, and this is going to allow us to solve this equation. So we take the green thing over onto the left-hand side and change its sign so that it's negative. So we get minus u over e to the u minus 1 times e to the minus u over e to the u minus 1. And just to save writing minus signs, I replace the minus uh, e to the u minus 1 with 1 minus e to the u in both places. So now we have something times e to the something equals z. This is, we know how to solve this. That equation can be solved with the Lambert W function. So therefore, u over 1 minus e to the u is Lambert W function of z for some branch k. This equation can be uh, rewritten when you multiply by 1 minus e to the u. You get u equals wk of z minus wk of z e to the u. Now we put u equal to wk of z minus something else. And this is suggested by the fact that we've got u equals wk of z minus something else that involves u. So we, we try this out. And that means uh, that u is wk minus w. wk minus w is wk minus wk e to the u. So w must be equal wk of z equal times e to the u. 
Well, that seems simpler. Now we have the U and the W at least separated. Um, in fact, it's simpler than that because this U is W K of Z minus W. So this gets replaced by W K of Z minus W. So we have W K of Z times E to the W K of Z minus W. This equation is much simpler because I can multiply both sides by e to the w, and we get w e to the w is w k of z times e to the w k of z. But we know what w k of z times e to the w k of z is. That's just z. That's the definition of the Lambert w function. So this says little w e to the w is the same as big w e to the w, which is just z. So that means little w must be also a value of the Lambert W function for some branch, possibly L. So this means that U is W K of Z minus W L of Z. So that means two I V is W K of Z minus W L of Z. So that means V is one over two I times W K of Z minus W L of Z. So we can find V, the solution of this complicated equation, in terms of differences between branch values of Lambert W. Now, it's a bit surprising that you can do this at all. It's also surprising that each of these steps is reversible. So if I choose um, any two branches of Lambert W and I take the difference, divide by 2i, I get a solution of this equation. Every solution of this equation must look like this, and everything that looks like this is a solution of that equation. Turns out we have to worry about uh, v not being equal to n pi because then we're dividing by zero in here, but that's the only case where we have to worry about. v equals zero, which is, corresponds to a multiple of pi where n equals zero, is special because we've got v equals zero times uh, cotangent of v. So v over sine v tends to one, cos v tends to, to one as v goes to zero. So this thing is equal to one uh, when v goes to zero. Um, and similarly, the, this goes to one when v goes to zero. So we have a special case when v equals zero here. Uh, v equals zero can only be a solution when uh, z is equal to uh, 1 times e to the minus 1. So that's a, a very particular value of z, namely minus e to the minus 1. So that's the only case where that can happen. But all other values, uh, v equals n pi, we're dividing by 0. Here we get an infinity, and so that's a, that's a special case. But those turn out to be accumulation points. Uh, as k and l go to infinity, the number, of the, the branch index of these things, you can show by using asymptotic formulae for the uh, branches of Lambert W that the VK of uh, L is doubly indexed uh, uh, solutions to these equations, that these things accumulate near integer multiples of pi. So uh, these special values up here turn out to be accumulation points of zeros. So here we have a nonlinear equation which has a bi-infinite family of zeros, and it has accumulation points of zeros near some very uh, interesting singularities of the original equation. That ends this particular video.